Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and in today's video I'm going to go through all the books that I want to read in September. I am beyond excited for this TBR. I did make this one smaller than past TBRs. I can always read more than what I put on here. It's not like it's just these books I can read. It's like to have like kind of like a an inspiration pile so that is what my goal is for this. I'm going to start the first week of September maybe finishing up any of these summer romance books. I can't finish in August but that is, I'm not going to include those ones because they'll be in a reading vlog, but I might not even do that. So we'll see if I'm in the mood for them still. Otherwise, I am starting my Fall Vibes books and I am so excited to read all of these and I can't wait to share them with you guys. So let's just get right out into the video. The first two books, I'm not going to give any summary. I'm not going to give anything because I've added these to the past two TBRs and they have not been read. But they do feel more like fall fantasy books, so I'm not mad about it. Y'all need to hold me accountable to these books. Fourth Wing and Divine Rivals. Both of these I have added to TBRs for July and August and I have not read either one of them but I am just getting the urge to read them now because of the I feel like they're very like atmospheric fantasy books. There's like a war college and this one I think they fall in love through these magical letters so that is all I want to know and these ones need to get read this month. If these don't get read I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just I'll be very upset with myself. <laughs> Next I'm going to go over a few other YA fantasy books that give kind of witchy fall vibes. So the first one is The Witch Haven by Sasha Payton Smith. I did get this personalized to me. I ordered it through her local bookstore. It says, for Caitlin, if magic has taught me anything, it's that words have power. And it's so pretty. It's like in rose gold. And I do have the first printing that has the crescent moon. About the history of witches in New York. And this is a duology, I believe. But... It's pretty much just a witch academy and there are rules for them and so one mind your instructors two no unsupervised spell work and three don't leave after dark and this just gives me such cozy vibes and i cannot wait to read this one next is another one that i did get signed and personalized to me and that is small favors by erin a craig i've been wanting to read her books for the longest time and this cover screams fall even though it does have bees and flowers on it i don't know why this just feels like more of a fall book to me and she did sign it to Caitlin. They have watched and I have seen and now I will see no more. That's super cool. It says, the heart's desire always comes with a price. And it says, a small favors is a mesmerizing and chilling novel about dark wishes and dreams and what lurks in the shadows of the people you think you know. Once the season changes and the small town, things start becoming mysterious and things are changing and she kind of has to discover what's going on. And then another young adult one is The Poison Season. This is the Owl Crate edition and it is so beautiful. This is what the original cover looks like underneath. So I've been waiting to read this one in the fall. I don't know why, it just, it just felt right. It says, outsiders are always given a choice, the forest or the lake. Either way, they're never heard from again. So it sounds like she lives on this island that is surrounded by a poisonous lake and her brother apparently is going to be exiled and she's not willing to accept that. So I think she has to kind of, with the help of someone else that she meets, find a way to protect him. This one sounds really intriguing and the cover is absolutely stunning. I love this cover. I do have some more YA fantasy books but I want to just space them out a little bit in case you're curious of the other genres I want to read. And I picked each of these books separately and then I realized I have two sad YA contemporary books. I think the one is YA, I'm not exactly sure. But apparently I just want to be in my feels. So I have A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole and If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. And great news, both of these have been announced that they're getting a sequel or at least companion book to these. And I am so excited about that. I love when authors go back into worlds of books that people love. And I've heard both of these make people ball their eyes out. So I don't know if I'm ready for that. I did start this one and the first few chapters I was already getting so sad. I feel like this one's gonna hurt my heart a little bit. And then this one, I have heard that some people say you shouldn't read the prologue first and you should read that at the end. So if you know what order you should read it in, please let me know. Maybe I'll read these back to back in a reading vlog and just be reading sad books. I'm excited to add these to my TBR. Next, I have some romance books I'd like to read. Happy Place by Emily Henry. So if this is going to get read, it's going to get read in the first week of September. If it doesn't, then I guess it's going to be rolled over until next year. I've only heard that it is very sad and the title and the cover is very misleading. And I guess this could be combined with my sad books. I think this is a second chance romance and I haven't told their friends it's just kind of them trying to decide they want to be back together or how they're going to move on with their lives without each other I believe. Next is a duology that I've been wanting to read for so long and that is The Confidence of Wildflowers and The Resurrection of Wildflowers by Macaulay Smelter. These covers are beautiful. I love the floral 
and this is an age gap next door neighbor romance and I have also heard that the ending of the first book is really sad. I'm, I didn't even realize that this was a theme until I started filming this that I picked a lot of sad books but I love age gap romance. She's 18, he's 31 and I that's really all I want to know about it. And then the other romance book is an author. I love their work so much and the cover is very woodsy. It's very, it gives me fall energy or just like anything in the woods or a forest setting or nature of any kind just makes me think of fall. Even though every year, every season is nature. Just, you know, specific elements makes me think of fall. Credence by Penelope Douglas. I love Birthday Girl, Punk 57, Corrupt was really great as well. And this one I've heard so many things about and I need to know what happened. It's an age gap. She goes to live with her dad's stepbrother and her step cousins. I've heard she has, I think, relationships with each of them. I am not sure. I've been wanting to read this book for so long. Whenever I see it on my shelves, I have it facing outwards. I'm drawn to it and I really love their books and the writing and the pacing. Love the slow burn and this needs to get read. I cannot wait to read this one. I have another huge stack of fantasy books I need to go over. First one is Book of Night by Holly Black and this one has definitely gotten mixed reviews but I did have someone comment on a video that they really enjoyed this book. The feel of this book and the atmosphere, this is going to really work for me. It says, Charlie Hall has never found a lock she couldn't pick, a book she couldn't steal, or a bad decision she wouldn't make. And it's a modern dark fantasy book, and this is her, I think, adult debut. And I have quite a few editions of it. I have one right there, and then I have a couple at home. So I really hope I love it because I have bought in a lot of special editions. This feels like the right time to read it. Next, I have A Far Wilder Magic by Allison Saft. And again, foresty cover. Love that. And another one that's signed and personalized, I went through a phase where I was buying so many books from indie bookstores and I love supporting indie bookstores and she put to Caitlin, love is not the sharp edge thing she'd always believed it to be. Even just that quote itself really gets my attention. It's an achingly tender love story set against a deadly hunt in an atmospheric rich fantasy world that will sweep you away. I think she's on a hunt for a mythical creature and of course there's probably romance involved as well. Next, I actually have a reread, and that is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I listened to the audiobook of this a few years ago, and I did enjoy it, but I definitely feel like I would enjoy it more if I physically read it, and I want to annotate all of her books, so I figured I'm just going to go in publication order. And this one, I remember being very whimsical and magical, and her writing was really great. And it's a fae-type world, and she's an artist, and I think she can paint something into existence or something like that. Or like her paintings have power, and so I think she goes to the castle or a prince notices this. It's a very dangerous power to have, so I think it's very intriguing to the fae, and they want to use it for their own advantage, and I cannot wait to revisit this because I clearly don't remember what really happened in this book. Next is what I'm in the middle of, and that is One for My Enemy by Olive Blake. I got to page 34, and her writing love it so much. I think I said this in a reading vlog but it feels like very sophisticated, very like dark academia and I cannot wait to finish this. It's rivaling which family set in New York and even though there's so many characters like I'm following it along really well and just the way she presents the characters they each feel so individual like none of them feel the same. I know I'm not that far in the book but I absolutely love that because sometimes when there's so many like characters in a book it can feel like some of them are blurring together but all of these ones feel like their own individual person. Each of them is so crucial to the story and I cannot wait to finish this and let you guys know what I think and then also read more of Olive Blake's books because I want to read The Atlas Six in November. I don't know why but whenever I see the book it's like it streams November for no reason. It's just November for me. Next is a fantasy duology and the first book is The Merciful Crow and then The Faithless Hawk. I haven't really heard too many people talk about this series. I know I think this is the author of a series that is very popular now which is Little Thieves. I'm pretty sure that's this author. I could be wrong but this has been a duology I've been very intrigued by. So I think it follows a group of assassins and it says to outrun and outwit the queen the trio forge an uneasy alliance that is soon tested by old secrets shifting alliances and forbidden feelings. I absolutely love when books put the map like on the end pages because then it's so much easier to flip through because I'm a person who uses maps every time I read a fantasy book like I follow where the path is this all started when I read Throne of Glass series years ago. I first read The Assassin's Blade, which I think is the first book you should read. I literally followed the map to a T when I read that book, and I feel like I was so much more prepared to read The Throne of Glass, like the books after the novellas, because I knew the world, I knew where they were going, and I just felt so immersed in the story, and it was so much fun. So 
If you don't use maps, I would highly recommend it. I do have two more books and this one, I'm not really sure if it's considered a mystery or a fantasy or if it's like a mixture of both. That is Loot by Jennifer Thorne. Honestly, this kind of gives me like the Wicked Deep vibes. It kind of mixes contemporary with some magic elements. So this story takes place on this island and this island is known to be blessed. All the inhabitants have good health. They have money. They're just, everything is going well. But then one day every seven years, seven people will die. And this is, I think it's kind of like a sacrifice to the island. And this one girl comes to this island and she doesn't believe that this actually happened. And she thinks it's just kind of like in stories. But then when she gets there and that day comes, she realizes that things are about to change. Because when this day comes around, it's actually a nightmare for the people who live on this island. And I just think that premise in general just sounds so intriguing. And I cannot wait to read this one. It's actually very short as well. But... I don't know, it gives me Wicked Deep vibes and I love that book so I cannot wait to read this one. Lastly, I wanted to include a mystery thriller and I'm definitely going to include more of these in October, but I want to read The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. I really love her books and this one takes place again in like a wood setting, which I love. I did start this, I got to page 31 but I just need to restart because I don't remember what happened. <laughs> So this girl works at a resort near a hiking trail. So six people vanished from this trail and then a journalist tries to come and figure out what happened, but then he also goes missing. And then one day his brother comes to visit the inn and this inn is kind of just thrust back into what happened and trying to uncover what happened to these people. And she realizes that she doesn't know the people she works with or her neighbors as well as she thought. And I love how she crafts mystery thrillers and I cannot wait to read this one. And it just feels like a great time to read this. Who knows, I might read more mystery thrillers in September if I read this and am really in the mood to read more, but I definitely wanted to include at least one of them on here. Those are all the books that I plan to read in September. I definitely wanted to make it feel fall, atmospheric, not too spooky of books yet until October, but these are the ones that are on my radar currently. And definitely let me know what you plan reading in September in the comments as well. I cannot wait to read all of these books. They all sound so amazing and I cannot wait to share what my thoughts are on them with you guys. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Love you all. And I hope you have an amazing day. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.